Hallo liebe Zuschauer und herzlich willkommen bei der Orgelfeierstunde hier aus dem Kölner Dom. Mein Name ist George Warren, ich bin hier musikalischer Assistent am Kölner Dom. Leider haben wir die schlechten Nachrichten erhalten, dass der Andreas Liebig aus Basel krank geworden ist und deswegen nicht für uns heute Abend spielen kann. Dafür haben wir aber einen wunderbaren Ersatz gefunden, der Karol Masakowski, Titularorganist an der Kathedrale von Lille. Wir freuen uns jetzt, ihn zu begrüßen. Ich stehe jetzt wohl hier in so einem komischen Gemäuer hier im Kölner Dom, aber ich bin tatsächlich auf 20 Meter Höhe im Triforium hinter der Schwalbennestorgel, wo wir unser Interview durchführen werden. Da unser Gastorganist heute Abend nicht so viel Deutsch spricht, werden wir jetzt äh, für euch das Interview auf Englisch halten. Hello, nice to see you and thank you very much for coming at such short notice to play for us. Hello, great to meet you, it's you. Just a few questions for you uh, before we begin with our wonderful concert this evening. First question that I'm interested to know is how you found your way to music. How old were you? Did you start young? Did you start old? Uh, tell me a bit about how you got to know music, your earliest musical experiences, the organ and so on. So, in my case, it was uh, really, really natural, I think, because my father is an uh, organist, ah. church organist. So you can imagine that uh, uh, at home we, we had uh, some pianos, some uh, keyboards uh, in the church, uh, uh, organ, of course. So it was naturally, I think, uh, for a child to, 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 to play, to, to make, make fun with, uh, with the music. Keyboard and to imitate your, your father who mm -hmm. is doing that. So I started very early, yes. Uh, uh, my parent uh, told me that I, uh, I was three years old. I don't remember, of course, that. But we have uh, one video when I'm four years old and I play uh, really with uh, left hand and right hand, some mm -hmm. melody with accompaniment. Do you play sweet? No, not yet, not yet. Um, but uh, yes, and of course, uh, I wasn't able to read the, the, the scores. Mm -hmm. So I started by improvisation. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I reproduced it, the melody which I, I heard, and my father helped me with, with fingering, with uh, maybe left hands, uh, some accompaniment. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, the notes and the scores uh, arrived. Uh, later, later, yeah. And do you find that this improvisation has carried you throughout your life? It stayed with you up until today? I think so. I think so because, uh, of course, I I, I feel uh, very well in interpretation. And uh, but improvisation, it's uh, most direct, most simple uh, way to say something, to to explain some uh, emotions. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I think that. Uh, it was important for me to, uh, to to start by improvisation. And when I teached before San Sebastian, when I'm professor now in Hochschule, uh, I teach the, uh, the children uh, since seven years old. And I started by improvisation mm. with, with them because I think that it's, uh, it's really something important to, to, to keep this spontaneity and uh, imagination of, of the young. I do a very similar thing with my students. I start with improvisation, start with um, just singing improvisation yeah. because they don't know their way around the keyboard so we start singing and then eventually make our way to the keyboard and then start interpretation. I um, considered, considered that uh, the very young students like seven years old or eight old uh, had much more imp uh, imagination, uh, much more. F uh, they uh, were much more free. They're and, not uh, hindered uh, by yeah. everyday life. It's yeah. just pure creativity. Because the older ones, it's like, no, I'm, I'm, I don't know what I want to do, yeah. and mm -hmm. uh, and the, the very little one, uh, no problem with that. The innocence of youth, yes. But you didn't grow up in the German tradition, of course. Uh, not even the French tradition. You were um, where was your father, the organist? In the central north part of Poland. Mm -hmm. Uh, when I was 20, I, I uh, was moving to Paris to study and uh, after mm -hmm. studies. Was that Catholic liturgy? Yes, yes, yes. With uh, Gregorian chant uh, too. Uh, it's uh, why I, I still love to play the masses and really it's a, a really important p uh, part of my 
professional life. Absolutely, yeah, wonderful. And you all, your move to Paris, what inspired that? Did you always know, I look, I want to go to Paris, that's the place for me? It's it's funny story because I remember very well when, uh, when I was uh, 14 or 15 and every organ student uh, wanted to go abroad a little bit to, to discover a different place, it was going to German, Germany, uh, of course, and nobody was going to France. And uh, I, I was sure that I want to go to France mm -hmm. because uh, I felt s so naturally with this French repertoire, a tradition of improvisation. Uh, um, so I felt that, that it's my, uh, my, my, way, my, uh, my place is there. Fantastic, fantastic. And now you come to Germany and play wonderful concerts here. <laughs> I am so, so excited. Really, it's my second time here in uh, Kölner Dome. And, um, I was first time here in 2016 with some crazy program of transcription, especially Mephisto Valdi by list. And it was such a, a strong experience for me to, to, to play in this, uh, this cathedral uh, uh, and this organ, especially to have this sound. Uh, coming from different parts of the cathedral. Mm -hmm. I love this because especially when you have some kind of orchestral works, you can have one soloist in one part of the cathedral and accompaniment in another. It's uh, such a great yeah. possibility. The idea of a German Fernwerk, an echo division, mm. you can really make that work very well here. And of course this symphonic instrument is for, perfect for transcriptions. Exactly. And I hope that in the French repertoire... Absolutely. Let's move on to the program of the evening. You mentioned that you feel very at home with the French repertoire. Well, you're certainly showing us that this evening. Mm. Um, tell me a bit about how you came across your program quite spontaneously, of course, because you, um, you were asked last week if you could come and play for us, which we're all absolutely delighted about. But how did you... What were your thoughts when you were drafting your program? First criteria for me it's uh, to, to play something which I feel really comfortable, really, really natural mm -hmm. music. And especially after this corona time, uh, I wanted to, to go to essential, mm -hmm. what, what I really love to play. And yeah. uh, um, it's why I chose this program, uh, especially with uh, Second Choral by uh, César Frank. For me, it's uh, the, the, the most beautiful Frank uh, mm. work uh, uh, for organ. And Sweet by Jerry Flay, such a, one of the, the, the most beautiful uh, pieces you know, of the 20th century and the history of the music. So first of all, is this uh, that I, I want to feel really uh, good with uh, and natural uh, with, uh, with the works. Uh, second, and I wanted to have uh, some connection between them, of course, of this French 19th, 20th century repertoire, and uh, because I uh, I knew organs of the cathedral, so I, I, I thought that it will, it will sound good here. I'm certain it will, absolutely. And the Vidoire, to play such a huge piece here in this massive building with this uh, monstrous organ, uh, similar in size to the organ of Saint-Sulpice uh, in Paris. Well. The acoustic as well, absolutely. Uh, is that always, has that always been one of your pieces that you go to and say, look, this is, um, I'd really love to play that when you find a huge instrument somewhere? Yeah, exactly. It's a, especially when you're, uh, you have a lot of energy, you want to, to play this kind of music, you can, uh, can really uh, uh, adapt the power of the music for the power and energy of this place, I Absolutely. think. Lots of big rests that you can build in and let the, let the building do half of the work for you. Exactly, yeah. I thought it's great with this acoustic in the cathedral that, of course, with this tutti, uh, it sounds wonderfully. Uh, you have this uh, uh, connection, really, uh, architectural and, uh, and musical. But even if you play just with one stop, something very smooth, very light, very... Uh, uh, delicate, uh, it sounds very well and mm. clear downstairs. Yeah, so the building it's the magic well. of, of this, okay. this uh, acoustic. Especially with this organ here that's built at the statistically best place acoustically mm. in, in the building. Yeah. I find that it really adds some uh, clarity to the organ mm. music that you play. If you play something here, then they, the people downstairs, they really hear, ah, I know exactly where that's coming from. And yeah. it's, um, it's a wonderful experience for people. You know, f you know, for us, I think that uh, we want to, to say something by music. Of course, it's our uh, mission uh, as musicians. And uh, I, I think that 
especially in such an incredible place like this, if you play something very piano, very uh, calm, it can be much more powerful than tutti with uh, so a lot of chords. Yeah. So this is beautiful here. Yeah. A piece that might not be so well known um, to our listeners is your foray that you're playing. Tell me a bit about that piece, how you came across it, um, how you came to in interpret it and why you chose it for this building. I am uh, often interested uh, by transcriptions to, to see uh, um, different repertoire to bring to the organ. Uh, but with this Pelas Melisande by Gabriel Forêt, I discovered by Louis Robillard, a fantastic French organist Absolutely. from Lyon, who made the transcription of, of this piece, this orchestral work. And I, I felt really that it, it works perfectly on the organ, really. It's, it's why I play this. In general, I, I play the transcription if I feel really that um, it sounds good on the organ. It's not uh, uh, worse version than original piano or orchestra. I don't know. That's but, always uh, the, the new, danger new with transcription. It's the danger, but mm -hmm. you have uh, a lot of uh, uh, works in the music. Uh, you have just the feeling that you change a little bit the costume of this piece. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, uh, but the. Identity. See it from a different side. Voila, but yeah. identity is there of this, yeah. this music. This is important mm -hmm. because, of course, if you, you you have a lot of music which you cannot uh, play on the organ because it's it's, it's more funny than than, than real. Uh, um, but we want to be we um, uh, uh, have a good intention when we play to be uh, possibly uh, right with what the composer wanted to say. Uh, so yeah, but but some works. For example, Mendelssohn, we have uh, some fantastic pop, uh, for piano, Provident Fugues, or Variations Serious. Personally, I think that uh, the, this piece uh, uh, works better on the organ, mm. than, uh, even better than the organ and the piano. But, so it depends. And this is the case of, uh, of uh, Pelas et Melisande, I think. Uh, we will have uh, uh, such a wonderful color. And as I told before, especially with this uh, uh, Spacing here that you have a soloist here, accompaniment there, some answer. Really, you have a, like a great dialogue between mm -hmm. different sections uh, of this piece. So uh, yeah, I am happy to to play this tomorrow. I'm looking forward to it. Really, really excited to hear that. Excellent. And how would you say you mentioned uh, to me earlier on today that you had a concert two weeks ago at a completely different instrument in Berliner Dom? How do you find uh, adapting to the different instruments? Because, of course, you play so many different instruments in the space of a month. Um, how is it adapting for you? Um, this is a part of, of our job, the organist, to, to, to be able to very quickly adapt uh, um, our technique, our, our <laughs> imagine of the sound to, to the organ which we, uh, we are playing. And, uh, I, I have to, to, to tell you that uh, I think that uh, the Berliner uh, organ, Zauer, fantastic, absolutely wonderful organ, uh, was one of the most difficult for me to adapt, especially really. And uh, I arrived two nights before the concert, so I, fortunately I had a, a time to really uh, um, be familiar with the instrument, but in the beginning, first hour, uh, I was really like, my God, I, can, uh, I can't play here. It's a, such a different uh, um, size of the of the, of the, the keyboards, pedal boards, sound. Uh, but after all, we adapt. It's, it's our job, and and uh, uh, if the sound of the organ is really wonderful. Uh, naturally, we want to do everything mm -hmm. best to, 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 to present this instrument in the best light mm -hmm. that we possibly can. It's our service to the composers and our service to the instruments. Mm -hmm. And here I am lucky that I, I, I know, you know the, the instrument. Uh, the instruments. Course, yeah. <laughs> 2016, the last concert, also fantastic. And now it's, um, now it's nice to have you come and visit us again. Of course, one of the largest, uh, most important pieces of organ literature in the past century is this wonderful suite uh, by Maurice de Rufle. Um Tell me a bit about how you came, came to know this piece and came to love it. It must have been in your time in Paris, or was it before mm -hmm. that? Uh, it, was, it was before before Paris, of course, because um, I love really much music by, uh, by Maurice de Rufle. Uh, I think it's, 
such an incredible composer. When you uh, look the context, this uh, 20th century, uh, he uh, he was able to find really his own style. Uh, uh, very original, uh, some kind of sentence between uh, this French ha special harmony from Ravel, uh, Debussy, etc. Uh, Gregorian influence, so we feel really like in modal uh, Gregorian. And the counterpoint as well. Of course, um, counterpoint from Bach, and uh, etc., etc. And he's really original uh, in, in this. And uh, the suite. Uh, it's it's a little bit like like second cover by by Cesar Frank. It's such a deep uh, music that uh, that uh, you are uh, happy to be organized uh, for th this repertoire. And so, so it's fantastic. And I I played this suite when, uh, first when I I was very young and ambitious. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to play Toccata, of course. This uh, such a virtuous piece. Uh, virtuosic, almost and fiendish Toccata at the end. Yeah. And uh, and I played the first. Toccata, and mm -hmm. I wanted to play this, and I, I didn't consider really much uh, prelude. It's like the Vidor Six Symphony. You play the first yeah, movement, and yes. then actually there's more yeah. movements. It's really nice. Yeah. And now I am 30 years old, and uh, uh, for me the prelude is, is absolutely mm -hmm. the best, the best part of this suite. Uh, yeah, it's funny how we change with time. It is indeed. It is. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Ja, äh, wir freuen uns alle auf das Konzert. Ich freue mich sehr. Ich bin sehr gespannt zu hören, was äh, für Klänge aus dieser Orgel dann kommen werden. Äh, und lasst die Musik erklingen. <lacht>